Hello and thanks for watching. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through my real estate equity waterfall model with a single cash on cash return hurdle. Now this is a much simpler partnership structure and contrasts well with the more sophisticated multi-tiered IRR or equity multiple hurdle structures that Michael and I have shared over the years. And I built this because I've gotten quite a few requests from those of you who are dealing with uh, maybe less sophisticated, high net worth uh, LP who aren't used to IRR hurdles. And so how this model works is during operation, there's one simple cash on cash return hurdle after which the remaining cash flow is split at some level, uh, some promote level there, there above. And then at a capital event, first the capital accounts are repaid and any excess cash flow from the capital event is again split at some promote level. So let's get into the model. First, if this sort of model is not what you're looking for, in the upper right hand corner I have a link to all of the other equity waterfall models that Michael and I have built over the years. And you just click this, it'll pull up the page where you can find various real estate equity waterfall models. But if this is what you're looking for, you'll start up here in the upper left hand corner. And first you'll say what the contribution percentage is between the sponsor and the investors. So imagine you are the developer or the sponsor and you'll commit 5% of the equity with the LP committing the balance. Next, we have the structure during operation, right? And so we have a preferred return, and that's a cash on cash return, or the net cash flow before taxes divided by the equity contributed to date, plus any accrued pref to date. And so let's imagine that the property level cash on cash return in a given year is 10%, and we use an 8% preferred return. What that means is that at this distribution percentage, and in this case it's peri passu or equal to our contribution percentage, up to an 8% cash flow will be distributed 5% to the sponsor and 95% to the LP. However, because there's excess cash flow above this 8%, that remaining cash flow during operation will be split based on these percentages here. And in this case, I'm gonna call it 50% to the sponsor, 50% to the LP. Then at, an, at a capital event, right, a refinance or a recap or a sale, they, there will be first a return of capital and a, pay, a payout of any accrued pref through to the end of the whole period. And that by default is split based on equity contributed, but it can be split at a different rate. And then in any excess capital remaining, or any excess cash flow, I should say, remaining after repayment of the capital account and any accrued pref is split based on these percentages here. I'm gonna just keep that at 50-50. And with that, our entire partnership structure has been modeled. And now it's just a matter of dropping in, first, our analysis start date here. Next, your net levered property level cash flow through the entire hold period, you'll drop in here. And when I say net levered property cash flow, what I'm talking about is capital invested plus before tax cash flow during operation plus net proceeds from sale uh, at your capital event. And once you have your net property level cash flow inserted here, you'll just come to this line and you'll just come over, zero out any years that, have, that don't have a, a capital event, and then in the year of your capital event, you'll enter your net proceeds from sale after loan payoff and after paying any selling, selling costs. And with these two lines entered, your uh, levered cash flow during operation is automatically calculated in this line 37. And so to get these values, right, you're gonna have your DCF, maybe you'll use one of our models or you're built, you'll build your own model to model to these cash flows. Finally, and this is just for reference, you can come down and you'll see the, the uh, contributions and distributions uh, to and from the LP and the sponsor during operation and at the capital event here. And those roll up to summary cash flows for both the sponsor and the LP. And then you see the returns, right? So imagine you're the sponsor. Because you get an outsized proportion of any cash flow above an 8% cash on cash return, what that means is, the L, here's the property level IRR. 
the LP's IRR then is less, right? Because the LP gets a disproportionate, uh, uh, well, the, the sponsor gets a disproportionate share of the cash flow above the eight, higher IRR compared to the LP's, which is a lower IRR than the property level IRR. Uh, same thing for your equity multiple. So if you have any questions about this uh, waterfall model, please don't hesitate to reach out and thanks for your time.